Hello and welcome to a hopefully brief mini lecture on how to prove the skein relation. Um, so uh, the last couple of videos have shown you how to define the Jones polynomial. Now we're going to how to define it. Now we're going to see how to prove the skein relation that we used to compute the Jones polynomial. So this is all in theorem 6.18. Okay, so here's the statement of the theorem. Uh, remember, we've been using this quite a bit. If L plus, L minus, and L zero are oriented links, which have diagrams that are identical except in the region where they differ as shown, uh, L plus has a positive crossing, L minus has a negative crossing, L zero has no crossing at all, uh, smoothed out in the way compatible with the orientations, then uh, the skein relation, which is this big thing here, is true. Let's see if my rectangle gets recognized as a rectangle. No, it never does, never mind. Uh, there we go. Uh, then the skein relation holds. So let's see how to prove it. Well, we're going to use, here's the proof, whoops, we're going to use the definition of the Jones polynomial. Uh, now, how is the Jones polynomial of a link defined? It's defined by choosing a diagram. So we need to choose diagrams of L plus, L minus, and L zero. And what we do is, we choose the ones that were described in the statement of the theorem, the diagrams that are identical everywhere, except in a small region where they differ as shown. And then we're gonna denote those diagrams by these three symbols here. So these now represent diagrams of L plus, L minus, and L zero. Um, so let's see what happens. Well, then the skein relation is this equation here, and uh, let's reinterpret it by using the definition of the Jones polynomial. So uh, we're going to say that the skein relation becomes, and now we're going to substitute in the definition of the Jones polynomial for each of these things. So we have to get rid of VL plus and probably move that T inverse to the left a bit and take instead minus A to the minus three writhe of that diagram Kaufman bracket of that diagram. And now, and that was t inverse times. Uh, now what happened to the arrows on the diagram when I wrote the Kaufman bracket? Shouldn't there be arrows here in this diagram? Well, no, because uh, whereas the writhe uh, is an invariant of diagrams of oriented links, the Kaufman bracket doesn't care about the orientation. So um, I can leave the arrows off that one. Okay, minus t times minus a to minus three writhe of the second diagram with the negative crossing. Kaufman bracket of that second diagram with the negative crossing. Plus uh, t to the minus half minus t to the half times the Jones polynomial of L zero, which is minus a to minus three writhe of uh, that diagram, Kaufman bracket of that diagram, all equals zero. And what I've missed out is the substitution. The substitution was always t to the uh, one half equals a to the minus two. That's how we write it. t to the one half equals a to the minus two. t to the one half equals a to the minus two. t to the one half equals a to the minus two. So all I've done is use the definition of the Jones polynomial. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as something simple involving the Kaufman bracket and then we're going to prove that thing about the Kaufman bracket. Um, so let's start by uh, reversing the substitution. We're going to write this all out in terms of A's. So or equivalently. Uh, so let's take a copy and let's write everything else out in terms of A. So T inverse. In terms of a, t inverse is a to the 4. And substituting uh, for a means I can just erase those brackets. t is a to the minus 4, so that's minus a to the minus 4. Get rid of these. Uh, t to the minus 1 half is a squared and t to the one half is a to the minus two, so that's a squared. 
minus a minus two. Whoops, I erased some of my bracket there. Okay. There we go. So I've done my substitution. So what I have to do is, instead of proving the original scan relation, uh, it's enough for me to prove the third equation here. Uh, now, since the writhe of this diagram, I'm going to understand the rise and get shot of them. Um, what is the writhe of this diagram? Well, it's the sum of the signs of the crossings in the diagram. Well, what are the crossings in that diagram? They're exactly the same as the crossings in this diagram with the, with the crossing smoothed, plus the sign of the crossing I smoothed away, which is 1. And similarly, for the diagram with the negative crossing, the writhe of that is the writhe of the smoothed one, minus 1. Uh, this amounts to So let's try that. What can we do now? Well, and let's make space to, oh dear, let's make some space to uh, fill around with the superscripts here. But not that one, okay. Undo, undo, undo. Um, so what happens to minus 3 to the right of the positive crossing? Well, it's minus 3 right of the smoothed crossing minus 3. And what's the right of the negative crossing? Well, it's the right of the smooth crossing. Uh, and then I should add on 3 there. Okay, so that's my that's my equation uh, after substituting for the writhe. But now you see, I can. Oh dear, this is this is not what I had in mind. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, let's simplify it a bit more, or equivalently. Can't write the word or, or equivalently. Well, let's just cancel out all the minus 3 writhe of the smooth crossings. And simplify. Uh, so I have, ah, and I simplified that to 0, which means I get to erase that entirely. And this is minus a to the minus 4 times minus a cubed. So that's just plus a inverse. And this is a to the 4 times minus a to the minus 3. So that's minus a. OK, so this here is what I want to prove. So the second, the second step of the proof is to prove this. So let's take a copy and move on to a new page. So to prove this, we observe that, well, let's use rule K3 on this symbol. What does the Kaufman axiom K3 say? It tells me that this is equal to a times smooth that way plus a inverse times the same diagram smooth that way and we're going to use k3 on the other crossing as well how do we do that well this crossing looks like the wrong kind to apply k3 but if we rotate our heads 90 degrees to the right then it looks like the right kind of thing so it becomes a times this plus a inverse times that so that uh, and now let's substitute in here so that this is equal to minus a lots of a times the Kaufman bracket of the positive smoothing plus a inverse times the Kaufman bracket of the negative smoothing 
whoops, plus a inverse times a times the cap and bracket of the positive smoothing, uh, sorry, the negative one, plus a inverse times the cap and bracket of the positive one, plus a squared minus a to the minus two times the cap and bracket of the positive smoothing. And now let's check what happens. Uh, we have minus a squared, let's have a look here. We have minus a squared times the positive smoothing. And here we have a squared times the positive smoothing. So this term and this term cancel each other out. And then we have minus one times the negative smoothing plus one times the negative smoothing. So they cancel out. And now we have a to the minus two times the positive smoothing minus a to the minus two times the positive smoothing. So altogether, that is equal to zero as required. Excellent. Okay, so that's the proof of the skein relation. Little box.